Hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Minen. Today I'm going back to my 100 day project. Still, I don't even know when the next one starts, so if someone does know the date of the next one for this year, let me know. Hopefully I'll finish with my 100 from last year before that happens. <laughs> and I have some more collages to show you. So this is a quickie, it's like 10, 12 minutes, and I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of new collages. So come on and join me. I decided to use this brown, it's just the back of a packet of paper so that you guys could actually see the outlines of the small pieces of paper that I'm working with. These are about five by seven inch, uh, you know, small collage substrates. And this is a continuation, as I mentioned, of the 100 day project that I've been doing for the entire year. So mine's more of a 365 day project, uh, just not working every day. I'm determined to finish this because I really, really like making these collages. I don't know what it is about them. Maybe it's they're so accessible. And even if you're feeling completely uninspired, you can still rearrange a couple squares on a piece of paper and it feels really good. And kapow, you've just made a collage. Most of the time there's only three pieces, maybe four. They're pretty low key and they're especially meant to be low key because in order for me to do anything a hundred times, it needs to be very achievable. If it was like, write a chapter of a book every day for a hundred days, I would not make it past day one. But this, this is fun. And it couldn't be easier because collage paper is like already made. So really you're just reorganizing and picking different shapes. Tons of fun. I use all handmade papers today. I often will interject magazine papers as well. You can see I have some pieces of a Whole Foods paper bag. And I will let you know that in this video, I do mess up the numbering of these collages. So Keep, it, keep your eyes peeled. You guys can tell me I use the same number twice. So if someone's interested in that particular collage, or one of the two collages that have the same number, you need to be very specific about which one you want. Lots of the paper that I have is colorful. I do have some black and whites in there as well. But I really enjoy working with complementary colors. So like greens and pinks and reds, yellows and purples, which I don't do any purple in here, I don't think. And then blue and orange. And as usual, I really like making the shapes. If I can get a shape or a line to continue from one collage piece to the other, it just makes my day. You don't have to do that. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just makes me so happy. Like it's, it's silly how happy it makes me. <laughs> I feel like I just won the day when it happens. But if you can't get excited about your collage matchups, what can you get excited about? You know, it's like any excuse to get excited about something. You'll notice that this is different from my process art. Um, this is very intuitive. I'm not pre-planning any of these collages and I'm just kind of winging it, but I am being thoughtful. And while it's intuitive that I don't have a plan and I'm just kind of feeling it out and being present with each choice I make, now I have something to go on for the next choice. It's not, I, I mean, I, I do want it to turn out in a way that is appealing to me. So the process probably looks the same from the outside, but for me, they're very different because this isn't, I mean, I guess it kind of is art for the sake of art, right? I'm, I I'm, have these pre-made papers that I'm moving around, but I'm very much paying attention to what it, what it looks like to see how I would like it to be. 
versus product art, which I do in my workshops and in other videos, was more of a self-care exercise just to move art supplies around on the paper and to do what feels good. So I guess there is a lot of overlap because I do want this to feel good. And I do enjoy the process of making these. But with true process art, there's not a focus on aesthetics so much as just staying in the moment. This weird shape that I cut out, I never thought I would use that, but I was like, I'll stick it in my collage thing, who knows? And sure enough, this is more of a monochromatic situation, but that tissue paper allows the shape underneath to come through. So it's a kind of a cool magenta red moment. And you see how much the green stands out now because everything else is a warm red or magenta color. Little pop of the complimentary color. Now everyone looks at the green. What I wish I had done, now that I know better, or now that I know how it felt during this process, I wish that I had taken, instead of using my giant bag of box of, of scraps, I wish I had just taken, I don't know, maybe eight pieces of paper, collage paper, cleared everything else out, and just used those eight pieces. I think that would be another interesting way to do that. I guess it's not better or worse than what I did, but I think there were, I'm sure there were points in this where I had too many choices and got caught up in, I don't know, caught up in thinking too much and overthinking it rather than just seeing what happened. I was very happy with how this ended though. That little green piece up and then I finish the curve of that white curve with the red. Love it. In the past when I've made these videos I've also had like an eight or six paper spread that I'm trying different collages, collage pieces out as I go but there's papers on everything as I'm kind of building and grouping things together. Today I just was very focused on doing one at a time. I don't know why, but it just felt really good to do it one at a time today. So friendly reminder that even when you have a process and you enjoy what you're doing, you don't, you know, trap yourself into feeling that you have to do it the same way every time. If I had to do things the same way every time, I would be in trouble. <laughs> because as soon as I say that this is how I do it normally, and I end up just subconsciously doing it the opposite way. I'm a contrarian, apparently. And I also have a very short attention span. Because you'll notice that the orange piece was actually underneath that bottom right-hand flap of the bag. And... I knew that and I took all the pieces off and then I glued the whole bag down so I couldn't go underneath it anymore. It frustrates me and makes me laugh that I do that because it's such, I mean, it's just so ADD that I can't even make excuses for it. And how could I, how did I lose track of my plan with three pieces of collage paper? So silly. All right, my mistake in numbering is coming up. Stay tuned. All of these were so abstract that I tried to put that H in to a few collages. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. Everything else was very loose and free. Even if it was cut into a rectangle with crisp edges, it was still jelly plate, collage paper, kind of rugged, imperfect messy 
and the H was just too prim and proper. This piece was a jelly plate stencil that I made that looked like a checkerboard. The first time I used it, I pulled it up from the jelly plate and so many of those intersections ripped. I was so mad because it took forever for me to use, to cut all those out with an X-Acto knife. And I was like, well, whatever, I'm gonna save this because I, I liked the pattern and it had so much cool texture on the back from the paint that was on the jelly plate. I finally got to use it, you guys. So sorry for all my people who, you know, believe in decluttering. This is one for for the pack rat team. I saved it for years and then I used it. All right, I already missed the call out too. It was 81. I used 81 twice. So I will correct one of them I've changed now to an 85. So at the end, I will number the pieces and show you which one is the 85. It's important that we're all talking about the same things if you guys are interested in one of these. This was fun too because this curve, this arch shape that I had, cut that out a long time ago and that was actually as a mask for jelly printing as well. And again, saved it in my scrap pile. But the blaze orange, that fluorescent orange at the top, made this more fun. I had some trapped gloss medium in there so I was just kind of squeegeeing it out with a pencil. And this is the, I won't say grand finale because that sounds like a lot of pressure on this little piece. But this is the last one for today. And I appreciate you joining me. I hope that you've been enjoying my never ending 100 day project as well. It's been pretty fun for me and I am determined to finish this. So there will be more videos. And hopefully they will all be wrapped up before the 100 day project starts this year. And again, if anyone knows the dates, please put them in the comments below. And if you're going to do the 100 day project or have a, thoughts about it, let me know what project you're up to this year. Thanks for watching everybody.